Shutdown babies. Like, there you I go. Mean, All right, uh, we have 6 p.m. straight up, so we'll go ahead and get started this evening. We want to thank everyone for being here uh, and welcome the commissioners to our planning commission meeting this evening. Uh, we'll begin our meeting as we always do at the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will lead us this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you for joining me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, for roll call this evening, we'd like to excuse Commissioner Hill uh, for the evening, and uh, we're glad that Commissioner Wilden made it through the, the traffic of Salt Lake City to join us, so welcome. Uh, time is now open for public input. Uh, this time is set aside for the public to provide uh, any ideas, concerns, comments, or questions for items that are not listed as public hearing items on the agenda. We'll open up public the public hearing at this time. Seeing no members of the public wishing to express any concerns or input, we will go ahead and close public input and move to business item number one. Celeste Daycare 3 Home Occupant. Uh, third home op occupancy located at 469 West Granary Place, Celeste de la Cruz as the applicant. Good evening. Yep, so this is for Celeste Daycare, Class 3 home occupation um, located on 469 West Granary Place. And the reason why it is a uh, class three needs to go to planning commission is um, to allow um, 10 students at one time. Um, a class two is eight, and then um, up to 10 would be a class three. So that is why it is um, class three home occupation. And the details of the business, there will be two shifts per day. Um, from Monday, so the hours are 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, um, two shifts and no more than 10 children at one time and a maximum of 16 students um, per day. And it meets the requirements um, of uh, less than 40% of the finished square footage will be dedicated to the uh, home occupation. And then for the traffic layout, there will be staggered times. Drop off and pick up will be in the morning, 7.30 to 9, and then in the afternoon, evening, 4.30 to 5.30. And there's only one way to get into Granary, and then, every, then uh, the drivers will be able to take the cul-de-sac to get out. And there will be up to, there's six, uh, six potential spaces in the driveway and then one additional one in the gravel on the side of the, uh, of the home. And that is all that we, all that planning has. Uh, thank you for the presentation this evening. Would you like to add anything to the presentation as applicant? And if you, if you would, please state your name and address for the record. Sure. Um, my name is Celeste Stella Cruz, and my address is 469 West Granary Place in Saratoga Springs, Utah. Um, the only thing I would like to add, so the drop-off um, and pickup, we never have more than one or two cars at a time, um, but we can accommodate if there's more. So that's it. Also, I'm the mom. <laughs> So um, another thing I want to add. Moms are always allowed to speak, so <laughs> great. Your name. Sorry, my name is Angeles Velasenor, and uh, I also live in Granary 469, West Granary Place. Um, I just want to add, um, because it's a cul-de-sac, and it, nevertheless, our clients, they're you know, people from Saratoga Springs, you know, from the area, but my idea is to put like, uh, just drive slow. Um, and then also a reminder for our neighbors to do the same thing, because that's very important. If we're gonna, the, our kids, they're never gonna go in the front yard. They're always gonna go in the back yard, that's why we are fenced. 
but uh, still, you know, just for, for precautions. It's important that that's what I think I would like to add. That's a great addition and thinking like a mom. So thank you for, for doing that for us. Uh, we'll turn it over to the members of the commission for comment and Commissioner Sprosty Burns. Yeah, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, I really want to start by saying thank you for going about this process in the correct way and getting approval and making sure you're licensed and all of that because that is so important. Um, I know that you are not required to be licensed until the end of this process, but I did just want to check on that. Is, is that all in place and moving along? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so currently we are... Well, so currently I have a daycare in 392 West Plum Place. That's state license that we've been there for since, uh, well, I grew up in it and then I took over. Um, so my plan is myself, I'm in the process of moving to this house. So move the daycare there. So we're still state licensed and we're running and everything. But yeah, so we currently hold a license with the state and with the city, we just want to transfer it to this house. <laughs> okay, excellent. We have had the license for a long time. Oh, good. We're like, like actually, I do remember uh, in 2000, I guess 11. She, um, what well, she had because I had cancer, you know, and she needed to take care of it. But anyway, so she came here and did the same thing for our our house, which it was in Plum Place. Then we bought a second house. But the economy is really hard, you know, and then it's impossible for us to pay two houses. And the daycare and preschool has been like lower a lot because of, you know, like, you know how's going on. The state has been helping us a lot, but I think it's smart to just do it at home, like, and they're gonna be all. It will help. We will still wanna provide the service for the community, but it will be just easier for us. Yeah, excellent, thank you. Um, I also want to just say a huge thank you for the drive slowly part. Um, I have a daycare that is really close to me and I frequently will see parents who are running late will drive really fast. And I just feel that's the most dangerous time to drive fast is when you already know that children are outside and waiting. So. I really appreciate that um, thoughtfulness and safety. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Sprosty Burns. Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll go to Commissioner uh, Mangum next. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I saw that uh, in the presentation you planned out that uh, you were gonna follow the code with 10 at a time and then it said, 16, no more than 16 per day. And I, I noticed the code says that you're allowed up to 40 per day, 10 at a time. Does, if, if you put the 16 down, and this may be a question for, for the committee as well, does that lock you in and that no more than 16? Or are you, yeah. would you would you rather be able to increase that and do maybe more if you'd like? I think if it's really up to you because we're gonna be running the preschool as well, you know, and the kids, Actually, they can be like, because, you know, like the daycare um, setting and preschool, they, it's changing a lot. Specifically now that the kindergarten is going to be full days. And um, so it looks like we have talked to the licensing and, and then looks like it will be like decreased because parents work from home as well. So the care going to be like less and then we can have what you said, like, if we, we put like, this is the way it's kind of a little bit weird, I'm gonna explain it. If we can have whatever you're gonna uh, approve, so we can have 10 at a time, for an example, like two or three, four hours, and then the, the rest of the hours, another 10, you know what I'm saying? But if we put 16, it's, it's okay, it's really up to you. Uh, that's what. <laughs> I, if I, if it were, and this is this is not uh, official, but I would think you wouldn't want to lock yourself into only sixteen a day. Um, so if it's uh, if they put it on here, does that lock them in and require that they can't go above that? Do I don't you, know the answer to that. Do you know that? 
That is a good question. I don't know the answer to that either. Because, um, yeah, because it does we, say the 40 per Do we have it as a condition? Code says they can go up to 40 per day, yeah. 10 at a time. And if we don't have it as a condition, then we're fine. So, and I don't see it listed here as... Well, if the code just says 40, and then we're saying 16 because they meet the code, but that doesn't yeah. mean that they're locked into the code, right? Yeah. Right. They're locked into it. So, yeah. So, I more so put that in there because that's what they are planning for now. Gotcha. And just so you're aware that, oh, yeah, they're definitely below the 40 for now. And number Great. five on our conditions says a maximum of 10 students are allowed at one time and, yes. and so that's repeating code and they would have to meet that do, do we want to consider what was shared with the neighbors because the, it was the were the neighbors shared that it would be 16 maximum and if we're going to change that that might be a, an issue too to consider so i agree with you i just want to make sure that we're not yeah i would think that there's nothing to change they're just simply meeting code it's like a parking lot you know if, if the 40 is required but a applicant provides 38 um, they don't have to notify if they decide to do 39. Uh, it still meets the code. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Right. <clears throat> I'm wondering, is 16, is that your licensure number? Yeah. Okay, so what we're talking about has nothing to do with this at this point. This is just what licensing has approved for them is 16. So our code says you can have up to 40, but that is something you'd have to work with licensing on. I think what we could do is go ahead and approve the 16 now, since that's what licensing is. And then if at any point licensing approves additional, you could come back at that time and we could just make sure if we need to re-notify or anything. Let me explain a little bit, it's kind of confusing. It's a, I think it's okay, I think we have it. You got it, okay. It's okay, thank you. That's, good question. that's the only question, uh, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Mangum. Uh, Commissioner Kilgore, you were next. Uh, I had a question on page two <clears throat> under uh, section C, specific request. Um, on bullet two, says that there will be two shifts a day with up to 10 children per shift and up to 16 children per day. So, I mean, now that I understand that the licensure is for 16, but um, you know, if you see two shifts with 10 children, that would be 20. But is that, so yeah, the idea is that... Code. Here's code. They can have up to 16 kids, right. but they can't have 16 at one time. So they can only have 10 at a time. So they can have as many shifts of 10 at a time as they need to. They can have as many shifts as they need, but they can't have more than 16 kids at one time. And they can have that 16 throughout the day. So for parents who, like, let's say you only work part-time, uh, that makes them available to do part-time daycare instead of just having full-time only available. Okay. You can have 10 and 6, essentially, as the team. You can, any, well, the shifts can be anything that you want them to be. It cannot be that more than 16 children at the same time, uh, throughout the day. Okay. All right. Oh, it's Sorry. 10 at a time. Yeah, okay. Please. Um, so I can have more so enrolled. But like you're saying, like part time, so I can have like kids can come from like eight to noon, and then they'll leave, and then we can go pick up kids from school if we have school kids or something like that. So we're never gonna have more than ten. Yeah, exactly. Kids in the home. Okay, so uh, yeah, I was just doing the simple math, or two shifts times ten would be twenty, but that's not. That's, it's that's, a that's I'm gonna explain interpretation. Yeah. What a current have. So, and I understand the forty. Right now, we have enrolled twenty-five. Okay, so we have morning shift, which is ten, and then the kids leave around twelve or one. There's some in the nap time. And then some of them, they come for, for the evening. Just that's why we need to be smart and be current and that what the state always check on us. Well, yeah, and we don't have any problem you can check on or like file through the state. But and then um, it's not just 16 total enroll, you know? We can enroll like 40, but that gonna be 10, eight to 12, 10, 12 to 4, 10, just like I'm saying, 2 to 5. 
example, you know? And then the, the capacity is different than the kids they enroll. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's the confusion. Okay. So, yeah. Not a 16 enroll. That's, that's not. I don't think our code actually has anything about enrollment in it and student populations, or I guess we do up to 40. So I think if we just maybe come back to this at, a, at another time if we need to, if we need to go up to 40, that way we're notifying the residents that are the neighbors. Yeah. I think that would meet that. Thank you for that explanation. Um, and uh, does the uh, applicant ag agree to comply with the conditions on the city's planning staff report? Yes. 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 Okay, terrific. All right, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. Any other questions or comments from members of the commission? Otherwise, I would be happy to entertain a motion. I'll do that. Um, I make a motion to, or I move that the Planning Commission approve the requested Class Three home occupation permit for Celeste's, located at 469 Granary Place, with the findings and conditions in the staff report. Thank you, Commissioner Sprosty Burns. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second that. Thank you, Commissioner Mangan. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any additional discussion on the matter? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, that motion passes, and thank you for coming in and bringing that before the city. Okay, we'll go ahead and move to item number two under the business items for this evening. Uh, this one is Raising Cane site plan located at 1267 North Redwood Road, Chris Bick as applicant. Good evening, commissioners. Tonight you will have before you the Raising Cane site plan. It is in the regional commercial zone located at 1267 North Redwood Road. It is directly south of Valvoline Oil and along Lake, so Lake Drive and Redwood Road. The site plan is pretty basic. It is a lot of 1.15 acres and it has the restaurant plus two drive-through lanes. It has adequate parking, landscaping. I do have to apologize and I didn't get, I put the lighting into your packet instead of the landscaping. So, um, but I do have the landscaping up here to show you. They do meet all the requirements for landscaping. There is the 30 foot trail with the a 30 foot easement on the front from Redwood Road in 30 feet and then the trail and it meets all of the requirements here. So you have the project information, again, the stalls, they have 27 plus the three, which equals the 31, or the 30 that they need. Uh, let's see, landscaping, this is the picture of the landscaping. Again, they meet all of the requirements here. The elevations are, I've got all four of them here for you, and the wind, the, Windows along Redwood Road, they meet that. And the screening of utilities and so forth, it does all of the elevations do meet all of the required standards of the code. These are just the renderings. I didn't put that in your packet just to show you. Um, they are putting in a code amendment for signage. The number one we would consider a sign, and so they have submitted that. You'll see that here in a, or in a probably about a, yeah, probably couple weeks um, after it's noticed. So probably not a couple weeks, maybe more like a month. Um, anyways, so with that, staff is recommending a positive recommendation. If you have any questions, I can take them. Oh, the applicant is here. This is still in all my thunder, Gina. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We appreciate you being here. Would you like to add anything to the presentation? And if you would, would you please state your name and address for the record? Um, Chris Bick, 305 West, Cassie Way, Saratoga Springs, Utah. Um, I think Gina covered it pretty well. Um, just wanted to thank, thank everybody for taking the time and, and the staff for working with us on this site plan. And um, I'm here for any questions. Um, I think Gina kind of showed if we were meeting code and I'm hoping this is pretty straightforward, but if you have any questions or concerns, I'm here to answer those, so. 
Oh, thank you. And we appreciate you being present this evening. I'll turn this now over to members of the commission for questions. Commissioner Kilgore. All right. Um, does the uh, applicant agree to comply with all the conditions in the planning city planning staff packet? Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, there, were, there was, let's see, let me get to the page here. By the way, thank you for a really clean packet. This makes it really easy for us, easier. Uh, there was one, uh, there was a, a can comply uh, that was highlighted uh, about uh, uh, providing a, um, a final uh, traffic report. Any issues with doing that? Um, yeah, no issues on that one. We, we actually just barely finished that. Um, Great. This, I guess yesterday, so. Um, and even with the stacking and the traffic report, everything worked out and was fine. Uh, queuing wasn't a wasn't an issue on on the report or anything that way. So, terrific. Thank you for that. Um, and then uh, going back again. And just to give you a little bit of clarification on that, they did supply the Plat F traffic report. They just needed to provide that extra memo stating that this particular site with the use that they are proposing will work so okay great thank you yeah all right and then um this is more for the staff but uh, there's a recommendation uh, where is it it's page 20 um oh yeah um on page eight uh under general review there's under um, additional recommendations. There is a recommendation uh, that wall art is considered signage and will need to be removed. Yeah, so on their, on their um, elevation, let me just show you. You'll see, you'll see the bar of light on the brick that is that straight line. Underneath there, they're calling wall art. And so that is the code amendment that they're bringing forward. The, most raising canes have murals. And so we don't allow murals in the city. They, it doesn't follow our sign code. And so they have um, just this week submitted, or last week, submitted a code amendment and to, to bring forward to the Planning Commission and City Council to allow wall art. As, and so you'll get that here. Also, the one, they're considering it, and you'll see it in different raising canes. They they have it, some of them are built in as an architectural I you know architectural feature. A feature rather than this but some of them do our signs. So <clears throat> what they had what they had promote proposed was the number one with the red on it. Um, and that's what we consider that more as a sign than an architectural feature. Okay, so I do have some questions about that uh, concerning the code. So I, do, I did uh, check the city code, 19.18.04, uh, I can't even read my own writing, 4S, I think, uh, prohibits painted signs on a building wall, but that's, but, uh, so you, you, we can't, you, we pro right. prohibit painted signs. And then 19.18.05.2 says, Works of art that don't convey commercial or non-commercial speech don't require a permit. Right, so the paintings that they had proposed on their first renderings are the actual logo. And so that's why it would be still considered a, a sign. And so okay. that's why it would be prohibited according to our code. But therefore, that's the reason they are. Oh, it is a logo, but it's just artistically rendered. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So I see now why we had to have that. Correct. Okay. Too bad. It would have been easier. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, that's, that's good. Um, that's it for me. Thank you for answering those questions. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. Those were great questions. Any other additional questions or comments from members of the commission? Hearing none, I would be happy to take a vote at this time. I can do it. Um, 
I move that the Planning Commission forward a recommendation for approval of this proposed Raising Canes site plan located at 1267 North Redwood Road with the findings and conditions in the staff report. Thank you, Commissioner Sprassy Burns. Two for two. We have one motion, and we have a second. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. We have a second. Sorry, Commissioner Wilden. <laughs> Get you on the next one. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any additional discussion on the matter? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. We'll have to work on getting one of those hot pink Post Malone raising canes here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> we're on to item number three under our business items for this evening. This is an approval to amend the 2024 Planning Commission annual meeting schedule. This was in our packet of information. Hopefully each of the commissioners were able to view that. We reviewed briefly at our last meeting the reasons for some of the changes, which um, makes sense to me. So unless there's additional discussion on the matter, I'd be happy to entertain a motion. This is the easiest one of the night. Oh, sorry. I'll do it. I'll, I will. I, I got this. I move that we approve the meeting minutes or the meeting schedule change. Is there a formal? Planning Commission annual meeting schedule. There we go. Yeah. I move that we approve the Planning Commission meeting schedule, annual meeting schedule. Thanks, Commissioner Sprosser Burns. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. There he is. Thank you, Commissioner Wilden. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any additional discussion on this matter? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Oh, did you have a comment, sir? Oh, no, I'm just getting ready. Okay. We have the approval of the meeting minutes next under business. Usually we have that at the very end, but I'm happy to take care of that now. If that's what we need to be doing. Yeah, let's yep. do it, because I'm ready also. Oh, man, she's on a hot streak right here. I like this. <laughs> It's Hall of Fame record night or record night here. Here we go. All right. Item number four, approval of minutes from March 28, 2024. Be happy to take any comments or questions for revisions. If not, be happy to entertain a motion as well. I, I have one comment. Uh, on line 252, if I could get to it, get there myself. I can't get my glasses on. Okay. Um, okay, I can't even read my own. It says uh, on line 252, uh, it says that <laughs> what did I write here? Okay, it says I, I wrote. It says not. So this is what I wrote. Let's see if we could figure it out. I wrote not quote follow city code unquote, but rather quote oh oh. This is my own comment. Okay. Um, so I didn't ask for the app, I didn't ask whether the applicant would follow the city code, but rather would they follow the conditions of the uh, plan, the city planner's staff report. Yeah. You're able to grab that on line 252, Wendy. It's such a minor thing, but that's what the question was. Yeah, I think that light bulb just went. Okay. So, uh, yeah, on line, uh, so on line two, it says that um, uh, I, I asked, uh, would they follow city code? But it wasn't, uh, I didn't ask whether they would follow city code. I asked them whether they would follow the, they would uh, comply with the conditions of the uh, staff packet. So you technically need to change lines 248 and 252 because up at the top you at 248 you have Commissioner Kilgore said he appreciated the clean application and asked if they would abide by city code and you would want to change that to uh, the findings and conditions in the staff report. Yeah, exactly. And then you would need to change line 252 to match that instead of city code, the, the conditions of the staff report. Oh yeah, and I did, I did have that in my scratch here. It says 248 as well. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So we have a brief, we have a uh, minor amendment here from Commissioner Kilgore, which uh, Wendy will grab for us. So happy to entertain a motion with this amended minutes. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from. Oh my gosh, I was wrong on it too. 
March 28th. March 8th, 2024. 28th, sorry. 28th, 2024, with the amendment as discussed. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Sprosty Burns. Did you have a comment, Commissioner Mann? No, I'm just going to second her motion. Okay, so we have a second from Commissioner Mann. Uh, any additional discussion on the matter? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. I really am winning it tonight. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. Nobody's even <laughs> voted against me. <laughs> all right, we're going to move to an item of public hearing this evening. Now we have amendments to Title 19, Land Development Code of the City of Saratoga Springs, Chapters 1902, Definition 1905, Supplementary Regulations, and 19.13, Development Review Processes. Relating to that, and the definition and regulations for temporary church office trailers, also chapters 19.12, subdivisions, and 19.16, site and architectural design standards related to connectivity criteria. Sarah, looks like you'll be presenting on this for you, for us, so thank you. Okay, good evening, commissioners. We have a few code amendments tonight and bundled them all together instead of having multiple reports. <laughs> so uh, we are getting a request for temporary trailers at church locations so that they can have offices in those. Uh, we've been getting that around the city, that particular request, um, because um, new buildings are in the works but are not quite ready, meaning they're getting ready to submit their applications. <laughs> so, so they're asking um, if we had anything in our code that would allow this. We did not, uh, and so we are proposing an amendment to the code that would allow temporary church office trailers uh, with a whole list of criteria that are in the draft that you see. One of those being a time limit, and then one of those also being that they have to have an app active application at another location. So we don't want to just see these go up and be permanent things. We want to see them as needed, and then we want to see them come down. And then you're also seeing um, quite a few changes related to connectivity between sites and between subdivisions. Uh, the language at the bottom of the screen right here, 1916.04.11, is the only thing we had, and it did say that parking lots have to connect to other parking lots. Uh, we um, have had pushback on this topic here and there. Obviously, it's much more convenient when you're in a parking lot not to have to go out to the arterial or back in. It's also, um, we're also changing, proposing changes to the subdivision section to create connectivity between subdivisions. Again, so that if your neighbor lives behind you, you don't have to you know, take a 10 minute drive to get to them. So those kinds of changes um, from a planning perspective are important for interconnectedness and connecting neighborhoods and businesses. That is the background for those changes. And if you have any questions on the language, I'm happy to answer those questions. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Well, well, do you have anything else you wanna add or do you wanna tackle these as, as they are? Nope. I don't have anything else to add. All right, we'll turn this over to uh, members of the Commission for Comment, Commissioner Frosty Byrne. And this one is a public hearing. What's that? Did you already open it to public hearing? Oh, that's right, we need to do that, thank you. So this is a, uh, thank you for the reminder. This is a matter of public hearing, so we're happy to open that up to members of the public for comment at this time. Seeing no members of the public present, have we received any public comment that we need? Also not receiving any public comment, we'll go ahead and close public comment at this time. And now we will turn it over to Commissioner Frosty Burns. Thank you. Um, so I know that we have some regulation around this, but what are, what are they using these for? Like, I don't, like just an office for like their construction crew management or what, like? And the particular user who, would, who made the request is gonna use it for um, office buildings, meaning meetings for ecclesiastical leaders. I can, I can speak to it a little bit with some inside baseball information on it all. So there's, there's just absolutely, they're way behind the curve on building, on building buildings in our area and there's no space for ecclesiastical leaders to have private office space. So the trailers are for um, private office space, the ability to manage that. That way they can use space inside the building for classrooms. It doesn't have to be taken up with office space. Hmm. So they'll be up while the new buildings are being built that will house those congregations in the future. And then those, according to your description and what I read, then those temporary buildings, those temporary office spaces would come down at that juncture. 
Okay, thank you. A little bit more clarification on that. When COVID hit, the church stopped building. And so then everything just opened back up and it was like every, they needed buildings really quickly and they couldn't build them fast enough. So um, COVID was part of the reason that they're struggling now, so. And I do want to point out, it does say church. That doesn't mean any particular denomination. <laughs> just, just right. I mean, I, there was a particular denomination that made the request, but it would apply to any similar situation. Absolutely. Yeah, and I appreciated that because that was actually something I like specifically looked at because I was like, it, it does say any, a church. So, right. um, but we wouldn't allow like a business to do this. And I understand this is a different situation. So I'm kind of just kind of torn on this idea that we are, we would, uh, I don't know. I need to think for a minute. Thanks, Commissioner Sprouster Burns. We'll circle back to you certainly, and we'll go to Commissioner Kippor at this time. So, so I have the same issue. Um, do we have to call it a temporary church office building? Can we just call it, or, or um, can we just call it a temporary? Uh, what is it? We, we a do have. No, trailers, I'm sorry, trailer. We have one other category in our code where we allow temporary trailers, and that's for sales offices subdivision. And we allow that for the. Um, life of the structure of the subdivision. So once the last home is done, it has to go. So if we allow that for sales offices, I mean, are there any uh, particular, um, you know, restriction? So wh why, why do we have to have a separate one for churches if they want to hold meetings there? I mean, if, I mean. Be, um, and the reason it's a different code is, is as I mentioned in a subdivision, as soon as it's done, as soon as it's built, it has to go. They're asking for this in, in subdivisions that are completed, that, you know, and that have buildings on them. So it's different regulations. Some of the, we base this off of that code. A lot of the regulations are very similar, but there's also regulations that are specific to temporary church office trailers. And, and kind of to go along with your point, Rachel, is there, if we open it up to businesses, there are so many different uses and Take, for example, a medical business, a medical office, let's say down here on a Riverside Drive. If we would have allowed a temporary medical office to go there while construct constructing, it would be a mass chaos. So, I mean, that's why we're, we have them in already established, um, I guess, church sites so that there's already improvements. There's restrooms in adjacent buildings so that there doesn't have to be water and sewer hookups. These are strictly just for office space because there isn't another building to do that. Any denomination can do that, so. Yeah, and I do appreciate that. I just also, we're talking about a, we're currently talking about this, putting this code in place because a denomination has asked for it that denomination also happens to have a real estate arm as part of their holdings. And I just have a hard time saying, you know, I'm sorry that you chose to stop building. Your crisis is not my problem because like it isn't, you should have been building and meeting your needs, but that doesn't really do the good for the community that we really are supposed to be doing. Right. So as long as there's this good regulation in here, which I really appreciate that you guys took the time to like come up with things that really work. The only thing that I would actually really strengthen on it is it has, it has that it's tied to a building that's going up, maybe tie each application to a specific building so that then once that application is done, they either need to pull it or approve it for a different location. So they could keep that there in that spot and keep using it if they need to, but it stays kind of more on top of it. But I think this verbiage is really good. I think it's a good setup. I think this does meet the needs of the citizens that, um, you know, and I, I think people do have a right to uh, meet with their ecclesia ecclesiastical leaders in a safe environment. So I, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and vote in a, an affirmative way for this. Thank you. There's, there's my.
Happily thoughts. Thanks, Commissioner Spressburn. Sorry, uh, Commissioner Kirgold, do you have any other thoughts or questions? Yeah, I, um, I guess I'm going along with uh, what Commissioner Spassi Burns just said, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. I just still have a just an issue where um, somebody you know uh, comes and has a specific need because of planning, uh, whether it's good planning or bad planning, but and says that uh, yeah, we have a lot of people who want our, our our services, and it's like well, that could be said for a lot of other you know businesses. And as far as uh, bathrooms and all that, I think that's something that we could you know, tie to in the code, say you can't do that unless you have power, or unless you have restrooms and you know, all that stuff. So I don't think that is specific to a building that's, or a trailer that's put on a place that's already built. Um, or that's something we could just simply require. And I, I don't know, it just seems like there's a little bit of, um, it's not so much favoritism. I mean, we're just simply considering you know, what's been asked, but it just seems like, um, you know, we, a major landholder in the city asks for something because of some planning and there's a need for it. There's a, a need and they just don't have the buildings for it, so suddenly we're allowing trailers in an, in an area where we didn't before. And that's where, or if we are allowing it with some businesses and just apply the same, same standards, um, why, why is it different? Um, but I don't know, I just, I just feel like um, there's a little bit of, again, not favoritism, but it just seems like we're being wagged um, so it's a, just a, I don't think it involves any uh, taxpayer money or anything like that, so I'm, you know, there's not that kind of a concern. It's just kind of optics. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, that's my concern there. Thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. Any other members of the commission have questions or comments? Commissioner Wilden? So I wanted to ask, are we moving past the trailers, or are we still oh, on the trailers? Yeah. No. Anything? Oh, okay. So we talked about connecting a parking lot, you know, basically opening it up so a parking lot connects to two different roads. Oh, I do have some examples in my PowerPoint. I didn't get to those. <laughs> so right. um, on the connectivity topic, I put an example up here. Um, this is the, uh, this is um, Medical Drive and Redwood Road on the site at 1140 North, which leads into Riverbend. And this commercial development is called The Point, and this one's called Riverbend Commercial. Then we have Riverbend Townhomes. And then over here, we have River View um, or Riverside. I, I put it up here. So Riverside. And then you can see we don't have stubs. So, you know, we were talking about parking lots connected and things like that. In the future, there will be a road through here. But this is the mm -hmm. language we want to strengthen, that they, that they have to stub even to vacant property. Um, and, and before, it might have been like, well, that's in a different zone. You know, so do we have to stub to that or, or things like that? So we're trying to strengthen this. So, you, so there needs to be a stub, um, even if the zone is different or even if um, it's not quite developed, right? And, and so that's a commercial example, and then um, this right here, and it, many of you might have heard that there are concerns at Sergeant Court, and Sergeant Court is a, it's zoned mixed use, it has commercial up front and then residential townhomes in the back, and then they have one entrance. And the challenge that this has caught, caused, created, um, as we've grown as a city, traffic has increased, and traffic at this light can often back up past Sergeant Court, and it can be very difficult for these residents and business user, users to get in and out. And so if this code had been in place, we would have other stubs, and we would have been able to you know, re require other connections. And so there's several reasons behind connecting, and um, you know, the, the reasons I talked about earlier also um, uh, public safety is also a reason. Um, there has been an, an instance where it was difficult for um, emergency services to get into this development. And so there's multi there's a myriad of reasons for what we're proposing in the code. But uh, yeah, sorry, I no, that's <laughs> forgot about these slides. But um, yeah, go ahead. No, excellent. Um, I've been in parking lots where you are, you come in and then there's exits out of those parking lots stubbed off, but they have installed a gate that stops you and then you, you end up with that same result of just having one in. Is that considered in this because these are private 
uh, land, and, it's private land, and it, they can just kind of put a gate there? Is there any restriction to that? We do have a requirement in this proposal for public streets every thousand feet, um, and that would help with the concerns that you're talking about. It wouldn't it wouldn't eliminate that entirely. Um, so there would still be allowances for private streets, that public streets would be occurring every thousand feet for those reasons. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wilden. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. We'll go over to Commissioner Kilgore. Um, so I thought in the code we had um, a requirement where after a certain number, a certain I can't remember if it's a certain number, a certain size or a certain number of length of feet or whatever, that there has to be two uh, entrances and egresses out of a neighborhood. So wouldn't that take care of this issue, or or is that came too late, or? We do have that as well. That doesn't specify public or private or, um, well, it does, in a way, it specifies spacing. So that one is fi is based on fire code, and you need two um, entrances, you need access points, um, to uh, leading back to a collector street um, once you have more than 30 homes, and that really has to do with fire safety. So that does help. It just, um, we're, it, this will help even more. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Kilgore. Do we have any other members of the commission with questions or comments? Otherwise, I would be happy to entertain a motion. Where, where do it go, though? Hold on, sorry. Um, Based upon the evidence and explanation received today, I move to forward a positive recommendation to the City Council for the proposed amendment to Title 19 with the following um, findings and conditions listed in the staff report. That are there. Thank you, Commissioner Sprosty Burns. We have a, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second that. Thank you, Commissioner Megan. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any additional discussion on the matter? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. We'll move to commissioner comments. Would any members of the commission like to make a comment at this? Commissioner Kilgore. I have a question. Um, where was I? So I was getting my skin checked at the dermatologist on, th it's the, um, you know, past Dalmore, uh, th yeah, and then you have to go through Thrive, that, that area. So when I was looking out the window, waiting for my doctor to come show up, um, I saw that there's like a, a, um, a um, what do you call that, the, a strip uh, between Redwood Road and the uh, landscaped uh, section of, you know, of those office buildings. But there's a section just, uh, which side is that? East of the sidewalk, uh, the walkway that's on Redwood Road, and that part's not um, landscaped. And it's just like a, maybe a four foot or five foot strip, and it goes all the way up to the next uh, properties, and then that is landscaped. So I'm, I'm just wondering, is that the property owner's responsibility, or is that the city's responsibility? Because there's weeds and stuff growing up. It, it is landscaped up to where you could see where it should be landscaped, and then there's that strip there, and then there's the sidewalk. Um, and then the, in the adjacent property, it is landscaped. So I'm just wondering what that is, because I could see that if someone doesn't take care of it, the weeds will just, you know, just keep growing and growing. No, they won't. They won't grow. No, they, we've asked them to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiations right now. <laughs> uh, Good. <laughs> you're, I, I think this is, you're meaning the area between the asphalt and the sidewalk? Yeah. Let yeah, me, that part right there. Let me look into that. I can see what you're saying. So in front of Dalmore Meadows, it's landscaped, and then in front of Thrive, it's not. Let me Yeah, look. and it's just that one, you know, long section. Right. And is it a no man's land, or, you know, I mean, someone's got to own it. It is somewhat of a no man's land. We usually um, put that in our review when we review plans, uh, but it, it can be something that gets missed because it is sort of a no man's land. So, and, and then sometimes we have plats and then site plans. And so let me look into it a little bit further. I'll just make a note of it and then um, 
hopefully we can get that taken care of. So. Yeah, because it's just, you know, as you come in from, Pione- is that Pioneer Crossing, I think? And when you come in there, it it's, should be nice, you know, just um, to see, especially when the other parts are. So just, um, just bringing that up to your attention. Thank you. As far as weeds, though. <laughs> Deep, <laughs> detente, yeah. He's I, I do have that. Okay, uh, thank you, Commissioner Kilgore. Um, Commissioner Sprosty Burns. Um, this is for Ken, I think, is who will need to hear this one. Um, the canal uh, going through Harvest Hills, there's one of the bridges uh, that the road goes over. It's had some, uh, the rock wall crumble in. Last year, the rock wall on the north side of the bridge had crumbled in. And now, and the, the I'm not sure if the city or the canal company came down to fix it, but now it's crumbled down, like fallen down on the south side. Um, what is your question? Yeah, you That's it. To... Just letting you guys know. It's, it's broken. Bring, bring it up to... Fix it. To public Works. Okay. Are, oh, you're not Public Works. That's right. <laughs> you're engineering. I thought engineering, like... Is over everything because you guys are the smart ones. So. <laughs> I can pass that on to Public Works. Can you? Sorry. Can you? <laughs> you're like, She's got to pull that paper. I'm gonna. I want to get a better idea of the location. So mm -hmm. go right to the light that goes in to Harvest. Okay. Just taking a minute to load. And then just go a little bit west of the first roundabout. Okay. Here? Yep, just go a little bit west and see where the canal is. Uh, just follow that road west right there. there. Okay. Yep. Okay, so there's yeah. a retaining wall in here? Yeah, there's a retaining wall on each side of that bridge that's right there. And last year on the south side, the like rock wall that is down in the canal area had crumbled down. I talked to Public Works, not engineering, even you guys are probably their bosses. but. Uh, my husband's an engineer. <laughs> um, but now it's on the other side. I think it was the city that fixed it last year. I don't think it was the canal company, but I'm not 100% sure, so. Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Sposty Burns. If you see something, say something. That's good policy, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Ken, are you new, or have we just not, I don't know if I've seen you before. <laughs> Yes, I, I am new. Would you like to introduce yourself? I am Ken Knight, um, staff engineer. Uh, yeah, I was hired in the uh, middle of January. I've been here for a few months. Um, first planning commission meeting, obviously. Um, glad to be here. <laughs> it's one of the most exciting things you'll ever do. It's, it's and you were really hoping not to speak tonight, but here you are. Yeah. <laughs> you almost, yeah, you almost got away with it until no, Commissioner right? Sprosty Burns got involved. <laughs> so, um, what, where did we steal you from? Where, did, where were you previously? I was uh, with a, a contracting engineering firm, um, Terra Technologies. Uh, we would relocate telecommunication facilities out of public right away uh, when a when a when a state or municipality had a, a widening, road widening project. Um, we would mitigate the conflicts as much as we could and, and then uh, design the relocations. Well, we're glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us tonight for Planning Commission. Hopefully we didn't make it too hard on you. It gets a little more exciting from time to time. You should have been here last time when I yelled at someone. <laughs> I heard that was a, an exciting <laughs> Uh, no, we appreciate your service, and uh, uh, f you know our commitment to you from the commission is if you ever feel like uh, just similar to last week, if, uh, you know things are being said that are inappropriate or whatnot, just just know that as a commission, as a commission, uh, we love the staff. We appreciate the hard work and recognize regularly the hard work that the staff does on behalf of the city and on our behalf, frankly speaking, because you guys make it really easy for us to go through the packets and and uh, understand what the issues are. And so, thanks for your work and your contribution through the engineering department. Thank you. Okay, um, are we meeting on the 25th? Yes. Okay, I'm sure that'll be in your, your director's report. I just want to make, I'm going to get out in front of it. Unfortunately, I'll be on an airplane coming back from Missouri, Montana. So, Commissioner Kilgore, are you okay to handle the 25th? Okay. Thank you. Any other additional comments from the members of the commission? 
All right, we'll turn it over to you, uh, Director Carroll for the director's report. Great. We had a city council meeting two nights ago on April 9th, and a few of the items that you've seen got approval. So the about time pub and grub, uh, site plan received approval, the Steel Ridge Plaza lot three uh, received approval, and then the, the Cliff Lake Master Development Agreement and Neighborhood Plan received approval, and Westport Business Park was also approved. The city council um, passed, uh, I think that's the right word, the downtown strategic plan. And, uh, and then um, the Wildflower Village Plan 5 and Community Plan 4th Amendment that the council had previously denied. The applicant came and requested that the council reconsider their motion and allow them to resubmit and continue to work on that. So um, that request for reconsider, uh, reconsideration of the motion was approved. Nothing else was approved, meaning they didn't present any plans at that time. They just asked for a reconsider of the, reconsideration of the motion so that they could continue working on the previous submittal. And then we are working on sign code updates. We were hoping to have a um, work session with our council, but that got postponed just because it was a really long meeting. And then, yes, our next meeting is April 25th, and we have a handful of items in the works for you, so. Excellent, thank you for the great report. Any questions from members of the commission for Director Carroll? Oh, I did want to just give a plug on your annual training. I think it's, um, you know, 12 meetings a year plus four hours of training. Um, one of them you had to do before you started, but just, just a reminder. And then we'll schedule some opens and Public Meeting Act training. Um, we'll just need to coordinate that with our new attorney. So, but we'll schedule that in the next few months with you. It better be good. It's a really high bar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll make it comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any other additional comments or questions? All right. Otherwise, we'll stand adjourned until April 25th at 6 p.m. Thank you all for coming tonight.